Welcome to the BlackAwakening.com. I'm your host, spiritual practitioner, 322 Peppy Black Sun. Today we're going to discuss Fatima Muhammad Banawi. She was an Afro-Palestinian freedom revolutionary. Very few people know about her. Let's examine this. Fatima Muhammad Banawi. Born in Jerusalem 1939 to a Nigerian father and a Palestinian Jordanian mother. Banawi's life and political perspectives was shaped by the Nekba. What is meant by the Nekba? In 1948, Palestinians was forcefully removed from their homeland. We're going to refer to the Washington Post archives and watch a video clip further explaining the Nekba. For many Palestinians, the devastation of the unfolding Israel-Gaza war is reminiscent of a painful time in their history, known as the Nakba. The Nakba is the Palestinian catastrophe. It is the series of events that led to the destruction of Palestinian society in 1948. Let's back up a little. At the turn of the 20th century, Palestine was overwhelmingly Muslim with a significant Christian and Jewish minority. In 1917, Britain announced its support for the establishment of a national home for the Jewish people and took control of Palestine shortly after. The crux of this entire conflict is that how do you establish a Jewish majority state in a land overwhelmingly populated by Palestinian Arabs who do not identify as Jewish. The first pictures permitted of Jewish refugees on their way from Cyprus to Palestine. Over the next three decades, hundreds of thousands of Jewish people immigrated to Palestine to escape the Holocaust and persecution in Europe. After World War II, tensions in Palestine grew. With the intention of pulling out, Britain turned the problem over to someone else the newly established United Nations. At Flushing, Long Island, the General Assembly of the United Nations has made its decision on Palestine. In 1947, the UN voted to partition Palestine into two states, one Arab and one Jewish, allocating a larger portion of the land to the Jewish minority. How was that going to work? This was, this was clearly an unworkable and disastrous proposal. Following the partition vote, violent conflict between the two groups continued. The British were instrumental. The very small Jewish community in Palestine, they helped it grow, they helped it institutionalize itself, they helped it in the formation of paramilitary groups, they helped train them and arm them. In the spring of 1948, the Jewish paramilitary began executing a plan to secure a Jewish majority state. So Palestinians were either driven out by force, in some cases at gunpoint, or in other times they fled for their lives for fear that they will be massacred. As the new Jewish state is born. In May 1948, Israel declared independence and the Arab-Israeli war began, with several neighboring Arab countries resisting the formation of the new state. Women flee with what belongings they can carry. And as Palestine struggles for national existence, the conflict catches the inevitable innocent in its toil. By the end of the war, Israel had expanded its boundaries to 78% of what had previously been Palestine. More than 700,000 Palestinians were displaced from their homes and hundreds of their villages were destroyed. I mean, for Israelis, they call it a day of independence. It's the creation of a new state that was the realization of a long-held dream. After 2,000 years, a Jewish nation once again exists. For Palestinians, it is the destruction of their society. It is the hell from which they have never recovered yet. The following decades brought several wars and uprisings. To this day, Israel refuses to allow Palestinian refugees to return home, making them one of the largest stateless populations in the world. In Gaza and the West Bank, Palestinians are kept under constant surveillance and harsh socioeconomic conditions. In October 2023, Israel declared war following a large-scale assault by Hamas militants that left 1,400 dead. 
In the first three weeks of the war, at least 9,200 people in Gaza had been killed in retaliatory Israeli attacks. For many Palestinians in Gaza today, the Nakba continues. Being faced with the choice of leaving your home behind, even your temporary interim home in the refugee camp, leaving that behind or getting killed is exactly the choice that our parents and grandparents faced in 1948. <laughs> This is what Fatima Muhammad Banawi experienced at the age of nine. She went on to join the newly formed Fatah movement and nearly carried out an attack on an Israeli establishment frequented by occupation forces, IOF. Fatima was jailed and sentenced to life in prison, making history as the first woman to be arrested by the IOF. She spent 10 years in prison before being released in a prison exchange. Like most Palestinians, her time in an Israeli detention did nothing but increase her resolve. She eventually worked close with Yasser Arafat to set up the Palestinian Women's Police in Gaza, which by 2022, would boast 532 officers. She campaigned for the right to a free Palestine until she died November of 2022. The impact of Banawi's work for the liberation of Palestine calls attention to two often unexplored groups within the Palestinian liberation movement, women and people of African descent. The centrality of women to the ongoing liberation of Palestine is one that cannot be overstated. From the days of the first infana to the women's collectives mobilizing the support of the general strikes and boycotts of Israeli goods, engaging in the frontline resistance and social politicals. Their contribution to the movement is invaluable and in that the arc of the Palestinian resistance is not complete without it. But now he sits in a unique overlap as a black woman having dual identities whose contributions have deeply impacted the movement. The contributions of Afro-Palestinians to the formation of a modern Palestinian identity are substantial. Generations of Afro-Palestinians have been essential to the fabric of the Palestinian society, resisting the colonial Zionist regime while simultaneously imagining building new Palestinian futures. Black communities beyond Palestine have a long and stored history of solidarity with the Palestinian people. From the Black Panthers during the Jim Crow to the civil rights in America to Nelson Mandela and apartheid in South Africa, black freedom movements have deeply invested in the vision of a free Palestine, bound by the common struggles against colonialism, economic disenfranchisement, and gross human rights abuses. Black communities have rallied against the dispossession of the Palestinian people. In the 60s, you had organizations such as the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, which was the arm of students participating during the American Civil Rights Movement in 1967, publicly denouncing the occupation of Palestine, while activists like James Baldwin, Angela Davis and Malcolm X was troubled at the conscience of a complicit society whose government was funding the ongoing occupation. This investment in the Palestinian cause speaks to the freedom seeking traditions of the black experience, which is intimately linked to the Palestinian cause for justice from the river to the sea. This was intimated by Mandela when he declared, and I quote, we know too well that our freedoms is incomplete without the freedom of the Palestinians. So I'm going to give you a message from the late great Fatima Muhammad Banawi. Palestinians do not know the word impossible. So I'm going to leave you in the manner in which I came with a universal prayer. In the name of the universal creator of heaven and earth and everything in between. Please continue to bless my listeners, their family, their friends, and the true believers for when the day of reckoning takes place. For universal creator, you are all wise and all knowing, and unto you we all shall return. But until then, we give the praise and glory that is due to you from this life into the earth. In the name of the universal creator of heaven and earth and everything in between, in your name we pray that this shall be done. 
Also, family, get yourself a copy of the Black Universal Creators 100 Laws, Morals, and Precepts. The ebooks are now available at theblackawaken.com. Also, ladies, check out Unapologetically Me Boutique for your fashion accessories at affordable prices. That's at umblc.shop. Again, like and share. Reach one, teach one. Peace and take care. Thank you.